I have a customer that had seen some other things I've made in the past and had an idea which I'd never really thought of before. And so uh, the idea was to take what I do with my epoxy beach scene charcuterie boards and use it in a piano bench. So I have a piano bench here. Um, actually, she dropped off three. Um, once two made and what we're going to do on the inside down in the bottom is we are going to turn this into a beach scene now after we do that we're going to cut an area in the top and recess some glass down in it and what it's going to basically be is like a shadow box type of look but in the form of a table so um they can they have uh, a collection of uh, shark's teeth and they want to just display the shark's te teeth on top of that beach scene so what we're going to do is make a new bottom for these then we're going to pour in an epoxy just like i do with those charcuterie boards and um and then we're going to finish it off by opening up this top routing routing down a, a groove for some glass and they should have a nice table that is made out of an old piano bench. So I thought it was a really cool idea. We're going to run with it and see how it goes. And it should turn out really cool. I'm excited to see the result. So I proceeded to remove all the hardware and I also removed the bottom so that I could get it ready for the board to be attached. So now all I have to do is get a measurement of this bottom. I'll notch the corners and then I'll use pocket hole screws and attach the new bottom up in where I want it which is going to be about three quarters down from the top here maybe an inch um, haven't decided quite where I think I'll probably go an inch down from the top go about three quarters worth of epoxy and then that'll leave me a quarter inch for the person to put the shark's teeth down on top so that's where we're at and we're gonna get that done now I've cut these to size notch the corners uh, cut them to size on the table saw and notched the corners on a bandsaw and all I did was when I, when I notched them I held the, the piece up to the corner made a mark on each end then I did the same thing going this way held it up to the corner made a mark on each end and then just cut the notch out so we're gonna put these in oh I also Drilled pocket holes on the bottom side of this to help draw this all together, keep it nice and tight. Uh, once I do this, I'm also going to put silicone to seal everything up. One thing I notice about these piano benches is they get a little rickety over time, so this will actually make it a lot more sturdy too. Yeah, there you can see new bottom. So I'm gonna put a silicone in here it's going to fill every corner, including the old corners um, where the legs meet the aprons from the original piece. The reason is I don't want it leaking anywhere. So I'm going to get a good seal. It's also important um, because I'm not going to be ever taking this apart after this is poured in. 
the, the silicone needs to be clear so it does not show anything. I don't want to use white or any other colored silicone. So um, that's one thing that a lot of times if you're, you're building a mold, it doesn't matter as much because you're taking that mold apart. This one's not coming apart. So we're going to use a clear silicone for this. Okay, so I got that pretty well covered. Um, one thing when doing this is you just check the corners, look for gaps. If, if there's a gap, just get some silicone down in there because um, that's where it'll leak. Uh, I got the bottom to fit pretty good, so there were, the gaps were small. Uh, if you don't have small gaps, you're going to have a bigger problem. Um, might take a few coats of silicone to make sure it's that it's fully covered. I cut two boards out of a 1x6 on the bandsaw and I just tilted the table to get a random angle and then made it kind of as a drifting shoreline. I then purchased some spray paint and hit them with paint just to try to give it closer to a sand color although this was a little bit more of a gray color than I had hoped it still served the purpose. Next I just got a level out and checked for level. Any unlevel corners I just shoved a shim underneath the leg to try to level it out. You want to make sure this is as level as you can so that the epoxy flows uh, into a level spot and you don't have a deep end. I did a rough calculation of how much epoxy I'd need and for my calculation Whenever you try to figure out epoxy amounts, you take your your volume that you want and divide by 61. That gives you the number of liters that you need. So, because I'm just doing a shallow pour here, I just figured I needed a 16th of an inch thick. So, I did the calculations. I came up with, um, I think it was point. 79 liters which converts to just under 27 fluid ounces um, so I'm gonna mix up 27 it, it, it doesn't have to be exact like I said I just kind of guessed on my depth anyways so this first pour especially doesn't matter all that much when it when it comes down to um, how much just so long as it covers everything so um, I'm gonna do that and I'm also going to blow this out because there's a little bit of dust in here and I don't want that floating in the epoxy. One other thing I do is to get the sand color, I actually mix a little bit of acrylic paint. I use titanium white and yellow ochre. And I come up with as close to a sand color as I can get. Um, and then I mix that in with the epoxy. So I'm also going to be doing that. So when you see that um, come in, that's where the coloring's coming in. So when mixing the paint, you really don't need a lot of paint. A little goes a long way. If you put too much in, you can actually affect the chemical reaction and possibly make the epoxy not form quite properly. So you want to be careful. Just do a little bit, add it in, stir it in, um, get it to that color you want and go from there. Once you have it mixed up, you just simply pour it in. And I actually started spreading it around with a stick and realized that that was not the easiest way to do that. So I just decided to take my gloved hand and spread it out, get it in every little nook and cranny in there and, and get it so that it would flow properly. So one thing, I've learned when using epoxy is if once everything gets wet, it self levels a lot better. If you have a spot where the epoxy hasn't been yet, it just doesn't seem to want to flow to that, that area quite as easily. So one little tip here is just make sure that you have the entire surface covered. After I got everything spread out, I let it sit for a little bit. And the more I looked at it, the more I did not like that color of paint I used on the shoreline board. And it was kind of showing through. I was not very happy with it. So I had to make a decision and I decided to take some actual sand and start pouring it over top. 
I have tried using sand in epoxy in the past and what I've discovered is once it gets wet it starts to get more transparent so I was very apprehensive in doing this I was con very concerned that it would not have the right look and once I went there it was over and so I decided that I was going to pull the trigger and just do it and as I did it, I started seeing it getting clear and hard to see. And so I actually decided to go all in and I just started dumping sand everywhere. I thought I'm going to put it as thick as possible. It's going to soak. We'll see what sticks and, and see how it looks after the fact and just kind of make a decision at that point. So I poured it on. I had a bag of sand that I used for some concrete countertop type uh, applications and I just poured it on everywhere, coated it real well, and let it dry, and decided to just go from there. It's been a few days. I uh, haven't actually looked at this yet. I can see there's spots where the sand got wet over here. So I'm not sure how this is going to look, but I'm going to dump the sand out and see what happens here. So I'm just going to pour it over here. Um, not exactly what I hoped for. However, I think it looks better than what it looked before. Before the color in this water, I'm going to use a, a Lux Deep Blue Sea from Black Diamond Pigments, a Blue Green from Black, Black Diamond Pigments, and Pacific Blue from Eye Candy. Um, I got all these on Amazon. I will put the, the links down in the description. Um, these are all a little bit different. They all work the same. Um, this Lux Deep Blue Sea has a metallic flake to it, which kind of gives a nice little sparkle. Um, that's the one, only reason I'm really using that. Um, so I thought it, it would give a little bit of a shininess down in, and I'm probably going to phase this out as I get closer to the top. But um, those are the colors I'm going to start with, and then we'll go from there. This is the one with the metallic flake in it. I mixed up two liters of epoxy and I just kind of divided them out. Now for this first layer, that the blue green color is the color I used the le made the least of. And as we come up in layers, I'll probably increase that a little bit. Okay, so I um, popped the surface bubbles. Now what I'm gonna do is actually blend these layers a little bit. I can already see I didn't get enough coloring in the deep end. I'll fix that in the next one, but I'm just gonna kinda blend them together a little bit so it looks a little more natural. I'm going to hit these bubbles that I made when I was stirring it. So what we just did, we're just going to repeat that process until I get the 
depth of the water area up to roughly a 16th to an eighth inch of, a, of the shoreline height uh, and then we will finish it off with some clear and waves so that's what I'm going to do next I actually didn't record the next couple layers because it is the same process so we're going to fast forward here until the uh, end of the last layer of color so I mixed up some clear epoxy and I made enough to just barely, what I estimated would be enough to barely reach the shoreline, possibly flow slightly over it, and that was about it. Now, it's hard to estimate that, um, but I did that and I split a little bit of the clear off into uh, a, a separate container and I mixed some white alcohol ink with it. And that is going to actually form the foam of the waves. But we want to clear to go with that. And then what you'll see is we'll just draw those waves in and blow them out with a heat gun. And it kind of just dissipates among the clear that I also pour in and gives you a wave effect. So one thing, just like before, we want to make sure that the epoxy flows out and covers the entire area so we'll spread it out with a stick and and get it to cover everything so that it flows the way we want it to so I have this white mixed up I used this um, Nada color blanco alcohol ink and what I found is it, it helps if you warm it up a little bit. Once I get it in the epoxy, it's going to need heated as well. So um, otherwise it doesn't spread and get like frothy like a wave would. So I'm going to warm it in the cup just to get it started. That way I don't have to hit the entire thing with quite as much concentrated heat. I don't want it to start like over curing too fast which definitely happens if you hit it with the heat gun too much all right so now all i do is i come in and um i just form some waves i usually do one near the shoreline one somewhere out a little bit and it just takes like a thin layer of a thin like line of white to do so so um, you can pour it in you can um, run it in with your like a stirring stick or popsicle stick I just do something like that and then you warm it up and as you warm it, it once it starts spreading that's when you know you've got it to where you can blow it as, like a wave. I don't think I have quite enough here. I'll add a little bit more.
So I have these piano bench tops ready to be cut out. Uh, so they need a center area cut out and then they need a rabbit cut that goes in for the glass to set down in. We're gonna use quarter inch glass on the top. So we'll recess that a quarter inch down from the surface so that it sits flush. Then I will also cut the center area out here. It'll leave a couple tabs so that the center piece isn't floating around and we can clean those up after the cut goes through. So uh, we'll get this started and, and then we can move on with the project. After cutting out the CNC cuts, we attached all the hardware. I added these barrel type latches so that if someone were to lift this by the top, the lid wouldn't just flop open and glass break all over the floor. And it also helped draw things in because once I cut that center out, I got a little bit of a warp in the top and it just didn't sit quite right. So I thought this would be a, a good solution and it worked quite well. The customer wanted to purchase the glass in a glass shop she was familiar with. So we stopped the production at this point and never actually got to see the final product with the glass in. It's actually getting glass in right now as I record this. But it turned out really well. Uh, I would definitely do this again and possibly do a different theme inside. Uh, it's a great way to reuse piano benches and I highly suggest it. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative. If you have any comments, please leave them down in the comments section. Thanks for watching and please check out our other videos. See you next time.